of seats still vacant. I bow to all the seekers of truth. 
<clears throat> At the very outset, I have to tell you that truth is what it is. You cannot transform it, change it, and unfortunately, at this human awareness, you cannot know it. Now whatever I'm going to tell you today, you need not believe blindfolded. We have already suffered a lot because of blind faith. But if it is proved, then as honest people you have to accept it. <coughs> because it is for the benevolence of your being, for the benevolence of your society, your city, your country and the world at large. So, one has to understand that we have not known so far the Absolute Truth. If we had known the Absolute Truth, there would not have been any problem whatsoever, because everybody would see the same Truth. There cannot be so many dogmas, so many discussions, arguments, fights and wars. If everybody sees the same point, then who will fight? For example, I'm sitting before you, you all see it clearly and you know it, so you're not going to fight that I'm here or not. <coughs> For that we need a last breakthrough of our evolution. As human beings, still, we have freedom to think whatever we like, but we haven't got capacity to know the Absolute Truth. If that is so, and if there is a way out, why not we try for it? We have been already told about this... this instrument that is within you. I've never seen such a big one, today with only you. <laughs> In Australia everything is big, I tell you. Very nice. <coughs> I mean, it can cover a very big hall as we had yesterday. A day before we had 3,300 people and this would have been better there. All right. As it is, this is the subtle instrument that is within us. It is created through our evolutionary process. As we learn say, science and other things from Western countries, from Australia, from all Japanese countries and all that, we can see the civilization has grown so big and we do not know our roots. That's why what is happening is people are waiting for a shock. Already they are very much upset. What has gone wrong with us that we should know our roots? Now, if these roots are coming from East or from India, why should we abhor it? Why should we condemn it? Because it's very important that we have to seek our roots and this is the knowledge of the roots. The Human problems actually cover all the global problems, most of it. And to solve them, we have to see to this inner subtle instrument within us. When these centers are in jeopardy, then we get physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, political, all problems, because problems are caused by human beings and human beings are in trouble because of these centers. So if by chance you know how to correct your centers 
and then to connect other skill centers also, you solve the problem. Now this power that is being told as Kundalini is called Kundalini because Kundal means coils. It is coiled three and a half times. It has some mathematical calculation. <coughs> now this Kundalini, when she is awakened, she passes through these centers and she enlightens them. She nourishes them and she integrates. Ultimately she pierces through your fontanel bone area, in Sanskrit we call it the Brahmarandra, appears through and becomes one with this all-pervading power. So you achieve two results. So the truth about you is that you are not this body, mind, your ego, your conditionings, because you say, this is my ego, this is my conditioning, this is my house, this is my wife, my husband. So this my, who is the my there? So you be become the I, the Self, that is the Spirit, which you are. And the second truth is that there is an all-pervading power which does all the living work. Look at these beautiful flowers. It's a miracle, if you see. They are different flowers from different seeds of certain heights, certain shapes, certain color, and we take it for granted. We don't even think about them, how they have come out like that. Who runs our heart? The doctors will say autonomous nervous system, but who is the auto? So we never question anything about living process, because we can't answer. <coughs> this living process is done by a very subtle energy, which you can call by any name, is the Divine Power of Love. You can call it as Ru, as in Quran, you can call it as Brahma Chaitanya, as in Sanskrit, and as Rutambhara Pragya by Patanjali. You can give it any name to it, it's different, but it is a power which we have never felt before, which is a subtle power which does all living work. So as if if you have not reached that source of energy, the whole development outside is collapsing. Also, supposing this instrument is not connected to the mains, then it has no identity, it has no meaning. Why was it created? And everywhere these days I find the seekers are trying to find out their identity. So what is your identity is that you are the Spirit. You are the Spirit and this Spirit is the ultimate that you have to become. Once you become the Spirit, in the light of the Spirit, you see the Truth. First of all, on your fingertips you start feeling this cool breeze, cool breeze of the Holy Ghost, you can call it, or this all-pervading power of Divine Love. And when you start feeling that power, it's, your body acts like a computer. You ask any question. There are many people who don't believe there is no God. I think it's very unscientific to say there is no God, because you have not found out. Without finding out, how can you say there is no God? They have all kinds of funny stories, even about Christ, they say He was not the Son of God. How do you say? You are not at that point where you can decide what is true, what is not. Just mental projections, they go on condemning all the great incarnations and 
all the great prophets and seers and sages, because they are all blind. Kabira says that, Oh God, how am I to explain to all these people who are blind in this world? Kaise samajamu sabajaganda. So, Sahaja means, Saha means born, so means with Jav born. Born with you is the right to become a yogi, to have this union, yoga, with the Divine. And it is very simple now. In the modern times, it's very simple. In the olden days, there were people who were trying to give realization, self realization. But they would have one or two disciples. And will they would not reveal the secrets about the Kundalini so clearly. In the twelfth century, one great poet called Ganeshwara, he asked permission from his master, his own brother was his master, that allow me to talk about it. And I will not do anything, but I'll just talk about it in my book, Ganeshwari. In the sixth chapter, he wrote very clearly about it. In Sanskrit, we had 14,000 years back a great Markandeya who had written about it. Sixth century, also Adi Shankaracharya wrote about it. But it was all in Sanskrit, was not available to common people. After this, after the twelfth century, when he wrote it, the people who were in charge of religion said that this is nishiddha, means it's something not to be read by anyone, it's not. Because they didn't know what to do about it, they have no idea, they had no knowledge. They had no knowledge about the Divine. And they were in charge of religion, maybe making money. So the second... lot of people, saints, came up in India in the sixteenth century who have talked about it all over the country about this Kundalini. In the Bible also it is written that I'll appear before you like tongues of flames and these look like tongues of flames, very silent, beautiful. In these colors as shown here, they look like. And some people have described them, those who have been going round the circle. But to enter into it, to be, supposing I see the light, I am not the light. This is the point many people have missed, that you have to be, not to see something. And once you become, then you have so many powers within you that you start manifesting them. The other day there were some of these born-again people who were just like mad over there, shouting, shouting. I said, you are not born again, what are you doing? You just call themselves born again, it's not the way. As we call ourselves Hindus, Muslims, Christians, this, we are not. We are really not because anybody can commit any mistake, can commit any sin, you may belong to any religion. So there's something missing within you and your religion. It's not innately manifesting within you. And that's the point we have to be honest about it, that our religion and ourselves are not one with ourselves. As we can see something, are we righteous? Innately, are we righteous? We are not. And there are temptations and temptations. So what's wrong? We do all kinds of things as far as religion is concerned. Still what you find? That the religion is not one with us. And so many bad things are happening, you see, these Muslims being killed here, these Israelis are being killed and this... I mean, it is really... I can't understand how can you do it in the name of God. 
Now this Bosnia problem is there and people are dying and e eating each other's body and sort of thing. I mean, can you imagine in modern times such things are happening all over the world and it disturbs you completely that why is it they don't want to see the point, there's something missing. With all that, we have to understand that if we have to solve the problem of religion, one thing we must know that all these religions were born on the same tree of spirituality. Only we have plucked the flowers and now we are fighting with the dead flowers. Then where is the religion? Religion is in this part that is shown as the green color. You see the ten petals, the ten commandments, ten petals. And this is to be awakened. That's only possible if this Kundalini rises. She is your own power. She is your own individual mother. She has recorded everything within herself what you have been doing, what was your past and what are your problems and what are your conditionings, all your ventures she knows. It's like a tape recorder. But she is your mother and she is anxious to give you your second one, very anxious because these are some special times. I call them blossom time. In the Bible they say it's a last judgment, and in Quran is called Qiyama, is the resurrection time, whatever you may call it. This is a special time when you are born, and you are all seekers, you are born to seek the truth. Be honest about it, that we have not yet achieved what we wanted, out of whatever religion we followed, whatever way we worship God. Some people have some sort of satisfaction uh, that, no, 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 Mother, we are very happy, we have got this, no, that's not so. With this happening, the first thing happens to you that you develop a new dimension in you, your awareness. Just now you are not even conscious of your centers. Then you know your centers on your fingertips. You can feel them also inside. Like somebody will come and tell me, Mother, my agya is caught, please clear it out. Meaning what? I am very egoistical, my ego is troubling me. Nobody would say that normally. Nobody would even think he has ego. But with this you get separated from yourself and you see yourself and your problems. So the first thing happens to you that you have self-knowledge. And the second thing then happens to you that you have the knowledge of others. That is the collective consciousness in which sitting down here you can find out whose chakras are catching where, what's happening where, what's wrong with somebody. But you don't talk the language as we talk about, oh, this one is a corrupt man or he is dressed like that, he has these problems. No, we talk on chakras. This is what the disciple of Christ were talking, the language of chakras. You say that this person has this problem, this person has this problem. And you start not criticizing, telling him anything, but if you know how to correct your chakras, you can correct yours and you can correct others. This is the power you get, which I call it is of collective consciousness. Because who is the other? Is what we say, the microcosm becomes the macrocosm. The one drop becomes the ocean. The consciousness of the ocean comes with it. This is what is just waiting at your threshold, you can get it. It's very easy because it's your own power and it manifests. So that you discover how glorious you are, 
how powerful you are. When this power starts flowing through you, it corrects your chakras, no doubt. But also, in the light of your spirit, your attention becomes very innocent. Christ has said, Thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. I would like to see any Christian nation where they don't have people of this kind. So, your attention becomes innocent and wherever you put your attention on, then what happens? It acts, it works. It works very well. So you become a global personality, universal personality. You can spread your attention, but you become so compassionate, so compassionate that you never think of harming anyone. But anything that is harming, you just put your attention and correct it in your own life and the lives of others. It is unbelievable for people to think that they can be that dynamic and they can show those results, but they can. Because all these powers are within you. Please understand that I have nothing to do with it. It's a living process. Like in the Mother Earth, if you put one seed, it sprouts by itself, because the seed has a capacity to sprout and the Mother also has the capacity to sprout. It's a built-in capacity and when the built-in capacity is there, it just acts as a living process. So far, at a human level, we have all limited memories, limited energies, limited, we can call intelligence and projection of mind. And they are mostly artificial. So you jump into reality and you understand what is reality. Yet you have not known the reality. So confused, what is reality? And the reality is that you are the Spirit and that this all-pervading power is flowing through you as realized souls. As you know the Absolute Truth, you can find out about anyone who comes and says, all right, this is religion, this is God, or says, this is correct. In every area, in every part of your activities. Who is the correct man? How will you know? Who is the one who is telling you lies and who is the one who is just deceiving you? As it is, I am very ashamed to say, say that from my country so many have come to loot you, take advantage of your ignorance. But even there was one realized soul he would have pointed out that these are all thieves, don't go near them. So this all-pervading power is the ocean of knowledge. I have seen people who have been ordinary artists have become great artists, even Australia. Musicians have become great musicians, talented. But those who were government servants, as most of you might be, who have nothing to do with art, maybe, suddenly become artists, poets. I was myself surprised because I have always uh, as you know, my husband has been a hard-boiled bureaucrat and I've seen people transforming themselves into such beautiful personalities and doing good work now, working out everything so well. So what happens that, supposing you are standing in the water, uh, in the sea and you are getting drowned because of the waves. But somehow you come on a boat, then you can see the waves and enjoy them. But in case you know how to swim, 
If you know how to swim, you can save others. This is exactly what happens to you. It is also true that most of the diseases get cured, or if you are getting into any diseases, immediately know that you are getting into this trouble. Immediately. It's not difficult. Because on the centers you can feel it. What center is going out of gear? And immediately you know, if you know how to correct it, you are cured. You don't have to pay any medicine for medicine or anything, especially for diagnosis. I mean, normally a patient is killed before he is diagnosed, isn't it? But in this the diagnosis is so easy, on your fingertips you can say what's wrong with you, what's wrong with others. And you become a very dynamic personality. You must be knowing I'm 71 years of age. Uh, practically I'm traveling every day. Tomorrow I'm going to New Zealand early in the morning, having a program in the evening. This morning I came, I have a program. It's working out all right, I mean, nothing wrong with me. But I, I never think I'm traveling. I think I am there as I'm sitting here on a chair. I am sitting inside an aeroplane. So the first thing that happens to you really is a new state of your mind which we call as thoughtless awareness. <clears throat> that happens, say, if you are thinking, you are thinking about the future or the past. If I tell you, stand in your presence, you cannot. Present you cannot, you cannot. You are either thinking of the future or of the past. And the thought comes like that, rises, falls again, comes up, falls, like that. Now we are jumping on the cusps of these thoughts. But with the Kundalini awakening, these thoughts elongate. And in between them is what we call is the pause, or the vilamba, where there is no thought and you are absolutely aware. No thought, you are absolutely aware and you are without any thought in your peace. That's how you achieve your peace. It's no use having peace foundations, which I've seen. Many people who have peace foundations, peace awards, they're so hot-tempered that if you have to talk to them, better have a barge pool in between. They get awards for peace and peace and peace, such a lot of money they have collected for peace. But where is the peace? There is no peace within. So first you achieve your peace and you watch. As I said, when you get onto a boat, you watch. And when you see the problem, you solve better. If you are in it, you cannot. So, also, one must know that this all-pervading power is the source of all the blessings. So many blessings are showered on you. People are writing to me every day at least hundred letters saying, this has happened, Mother, you know, this is my blessing, this was a miracle, that's a miracle. Now miracle has lost its power in Sajjuk. This happened to me, this happened to my health, this happened to my uh, writings, this happened to my... Uh, I was going in the plane and what, how I was saved and I, how in the accident I was saved, so many of them. They can't explain. So that we talk of God who bless, blesses us. We never felt that way so directly as we feel. So much so that I was, I told somebody that you better compile them. Within one's time he said, Mother, they have come up to my head, now you tell me what to compile. I said, forget it. Because the ocean of blessings, believe me, this ocean of blessings, is the ocean of compassion and love. It forgives. Above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. 
I need forgiveness. So, such a great power, which is itself so powerful, this energy starts flowing through. And it is, everything is tangible. Now, if I say that uh, diseases are cured, we have four doctors now in Delhi University who have got their MD in surgery. It does cure, also cancer. It cures so many diseases that I cannot in this short lecture tell you. But one should come as a seeker of truth, not just to get yourself cured. Because you'll be cured today, again you'll have another disease. Best is to get your Self-realization fully and establish yourself. Sometimes these connections are loose, so you have to establish. And most evident is that you cannot pay. You cannot pay for living work. How much do we pay to Mother Earth? So you cannot pay. Everybody thinks that God has a bank or something and He earns money out of us. <laughs> That's your headache. Money is your headache, not His. So you don't have to pay anything. It's not like an introductory le lecture here and then you go back and start uh, paying somewhere else. Not that. You cannot pay for Self-realization. Ah, you can pay for this all, maybe. But you can't pay for this Self-realization. And once you realize that what is your worth and value, you really give up nonsensical things. Like you belong to this group, you belong to that group, uh, and you follow this type of uh, methodology or that. But what have you got? Now face it up. What powers have you got? Tomorrow you can get cancer, you can get anything. One can become mad. I mean, they are saying in America within ten years, sixty-five percent will be schizophrenic, can you imagine? Already I think they are very immature people. And if they become schizophrenic, what will happen to this world? And they are so important. So there is something going wrong, we have to understand and we have to correct it. The greatest thing that happens to you, that you enter into the Kingdom of God. No more in the Kingdom of any country, but in the Kingdom of God, where you are drowned in joy, you are swimming in joy. What is joy? Joy is not like happiness or unhappiness. If your ego is pampered, you feel happy. And if your ego is punctured, you feel unhappy. But joy is singular. You just enjoy anything, anything nice, beautiful, without desiring to have it. Now this power that is within you is the primordial Mother who is being reflected in you as Kundalini. Surprising in many religions, they have not talked of the Primordial Mother, like they have the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. They have never said a word about the Mother, the feminine part of it, I don't know. Especially with Bible, I think Mr. Paul must have done. Because I don't know why he is in the Bible, he never saw him in Christ. All such things have happened. Woman is the Shakti, she is the power. And if you treat her like that, then she becomes something else, she is no more a woman. It's a saying in Sanskrit, yatra nareya pujyante tatra ramante devata. Where the women are respectable or respected, respectable. They have lost the sense of respectability, of chastity. There reside gods. So all these things also, these ideas of 
condemning men or women or this and that and making divisions and divisions in his division is never there. It's the synthesis, internal synthesis of the whole human beings, it's the whole world is going to take place. As you know, Sahaja Yoga is now working in sixty nations. Of course, India is all right because we in India we have this tradition. They know what is Self-realization. But in Russia, where they never knew who is God, you won't believe that I can't hold the program on such a small scale there. Minimum of minimum, sixteen to eighteen thousand people. A very learned, very learned people. See, they are scientists and they are doctors. And, and the scientist I started on science, they said, Mother, we know science, everything, now we don't want to know any more science. You tell us why are we on this earth and you tell us about divine laws. We don't want to hear any more about science, I had enough of it. Can you imagine they have bestowed a very great honour on me? St. Peter's Burke's University, I don't know if he has told you or not, but surprisingly, it's one of the oldest university and there are have been only ten members so far been, and Einstein is one of them, you see. I said, how oh, I felt very... And it was... I felt very shy with the whole thing. They said, why Einstein? Einstein only worked on matter, you are working on human beings. I said, I am not working, it is their own desire is working, their own power is... So they are so sensitive, I can't understand. Seventy percent of Russians are extremely sensitive to spirituality, all Eastern Bloc. We have been busy with our materialism, with our choices, this... Where have we landed? And when they had the coup, I was there and I asked, aren't you worried? Aren't you worried about this coup? That's it. Why? Why should we worry? We are in the Kingdom of God, why should we? Simple answer. Such lovely people there. They had never known me, they had never seen me, I mean, and no other guru could stay there. You'll be surprised, they threw out all of them. So this sensitivity comes, I don't know from where, how they have understood that reality is the thing we have to achieve now, that we have to become the Spirit, the Soul, and not anything else. I, I was amazed the way these people have reacted. I don't want to put a sort of a competition for you or a challenge for you, but definitely there's something, despite the very bad government and everything, how they have maintained themselves, so introspective. I wish people all over the world understand that there are problems. Your children have problems. The other day I was reading that you cannot avoid small children, teenage children who are not taking drugs. Why do they take drugs? They are seeking something. And they can't find it out of frustration. But with Sahaja Yoga, people have given up drugs overnight. I assure you, there are some sitting here like that. Overnight they gave up drugs, and whatever damage it had caused them on their brains, they have been recovered. All these indulgences that have suffered because of the genes, I think, genes must be wrong. The other day I read about the genes that there are two protective genes within us. Surprisingly they said that Asians have them all the time, so they take time to take to something like that. One gene protects you from being violent, angry, hot-tempered, 
cruel, corrupt, all kinds of things. We can call it the father, the sin against the father. And the another gene protects you from indulging into destructive things, sex, too much of it, I mean this, all kinds of rapes and things. Horrible things, we have never heard of such things that are going on in these countries where they are supposed to be developed. And also indulging into uh, drugs and alcohol and all that. This protective gene is being absolutely awakened again, I have seen, after realization. Whether you are an Asian or not makes no difference. But also look at these Germans, they say that they are the highest race, you know, they feel, they are the ones who killed small little children in the gas chamber and they saw them suffering. How could they do it? And they are supposed to be a very, uh, what you call them, higher races. Max Muller says that they came to India and wrote Vedas. How can they write Vedas, these people? They are not afraid of God, the way they have behaved. But now Sahajogis, Sahajogi Germans you should say, the gentlest people you could think of, gentlest, they won't hurt you, I mean they are so beautiful. So this Kundalini is the one, she cleanses all that, makes you peaceful, joyous and collective. Now I hope you all get your Realization tonight. Have faith in yourself, that's the main thing. You must have faith that you will all get your Realization. I know there are people who have some questions also. These questions now I can answer. For the last twenty-four years I've been doing this kind of work all over the world. So I can answer, because it's just a mental acrobat, I've become quite an expert. But it is of no use. By that thing you are not going to get to your Realization. What you have to ask really is your Self-realization. This power is the power of pure desire. All other desires, as you know in economics, that in general they are not satiable. You may be aware, may not be aware, but this desire is within you, is to become the Spirit, to become one with this all-pervading power. And that acts, works and helps you. Everything is tangible, you'll be amazed how it works, how it helps you. The second thing I have to tell you, that it is not an individual thing. It's not that you can say, oh, first day you might feel very happy and uh, very relaxed on top of the world. That's not important. You have to come to the collective, you must understand the whole knowledge about your internal being and you have to be with the collective to grow. Like if I take out one, say, nail out of my fingers, it will never grow. So it's the whole being is a living organism. Only thing you have to pay some time, as time for it. They will tell you how to be in meditation, not to do meditation, how to be in meditation. So first you get a state of thoughtless awareness, we call it as nirvichar samadhi. And then the state you get is called as nirvikalpa samadhi, where you get all the powers of raising others, kundalini, giving you realization, curing, everything. Those who have never come to the stage become orators, see these musicians singing Indian, songs. Can you imagine these? I mean, English-speaking people so hard for Indian music, I tell you, especially for <laughs> Indian words. But when they sing, ask Indians, they will tell you they sing like Indians. It was so difficult to teach even one word to the Englishman in India, one word. And now you see this. What has happened to them? How suddenly they are picked up? all the rhythm, all the things, which is very difficult. 
So, all these powers which are within you, you have to manifest and enjoy your virtues. Enjoy your virtues. You don't become proud, but you enjoy them. You enjoy your generosity, you enjoy your compassion. Never feel uh, that you are taking too much trouble, you are doing this or nothing. You think of others all the time and you live in peace and create peace all around. We have these people from sixty nations, they come to India once a year. I have never seen them quarreling, fighting, uh, doing anything against each other, never. How do they live? From all different countries, from Chinese to Africans, from Africans to English, and from English to Americans, and Australians, so many. In Sydney we have twenty-two centres. I must say, Australia is one of our very great country which has really very uh, enthusiastically has taken to such a and I'm sure also you all will. We have a great story in our Puranas about Australia, which sometimes I'll tell you. So may God bless you and you be confident that you will have your Realization just now. You don't have to do much, just it will take ten minutes more. But of course, I respect your freedom. If you don't want to have a Realization, you should leave the hall. I cannot force on you. It is something it cannot be forced. I respect your freedom out and out. So if you want to go, you can go. All of you want Realization, it's very good. Now one thing that should not upset you, because I've seen people get upset if I tell them, that you have to take out your shoes. I hope you won't be upset with that. You need not take out your socks but your shoes. <laughs> it does sometimes. don't have to say any mantras, nothing, and you don't have to concentrate also. Please don't try to concentrate. Just keep yourself open, don't force yourself into anything. As I'm say, telling you that it has become so easy now, you don't have to go to Himalayas and stand on your head or anything. You have to be very comfortable. And also, you should be very much pleasantly placed towards yourself. Because as I said, you are human beings, you are at the epitome of evolution. And you are, have a right to have this, because you are born at this time with a special purpose. So in no way you should condemn yourself, this is the first condition. Have full confidence. The another thing is you should never feel guilty at this time. Please don't feel guilty for anything. It has become a fashion now to feel guilty for anything. I mean, even if supposing you spilled some coffee, you go on feeling guilty for your life and what's this going on? You must value yourself. This life is not meant for feeling bad for small, small things. It's very great, it's very precious. So please don't have any guilt, but if you have, then you catch on this center here. And this is such a dangerous thing because it gives you what we call as angina. It may give you spondylitis, it may give you very lethargic organs. So very dangerous is to feel guilty. So why feel guilty unnecessarily? I tell you, if you were guilty, you would have been in jail. 
Now you are sitting here, so don't feel guilty about anything. I assure you, you are not guilty. So you have to really forgive yourself. Now, the most simple condition is this, that you have to forgive everyone. People might say it's very difficult to forgive, but whether you forgive or not, I'm telling you the logic, now think about it, whether you forgive or not, what do you do? I don't do anything. But when you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. Those who have troubled you, tortured you, are not feeling bad, but you are the one who is torturing yourself. But at this time, the problem is that this center of Agya, which is like this, absolutely constricted like this, like a cross, it is on the optic chasm. And if you don't forgive, it won't open at all, but if you forgive, it will definitely open and the Kundalini will pass. So at this juncture, you have, as it is, troubled yourself so much, at this juncture, please, please forgive everyone in general. Don't even think about them because it's a headache. It's a real headache even to think of these people. So you just forgive in general. Of course, we'll tell you how to do it. It's very simple. Now to begin with, you keep your eyes open. I'll show you how you have to yourself enrich your own centers, very simple. So please put your left hand towards me like this comfortably. You have to be comfortable, that's very important. Please both the feet apart from each other because these are two powers, left and right. Put your left hand towards me on your lap, just like this. And now we have to use our left side with our right hand. Now please put your right hand on your heart. This is the center where the Spirit resides. If you become the Spirit, you become your own master in the light of the Spirit. So please take your right hand, the upper portion of your abdomen on the liver. All of you should do it, please. This is the center of your mastery, which is created by great prophets and seers and sages. Surprisingly, the center of pure knowledge is lower here on the left-hand side, in the lower portion of your abdomen on the left-hand side. Whatever you have done, forget it, forget, forget it. Now, raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen. Yeah? Now on your heart. Now in the corner of your neck and shoulder, as I have already told you, when the center catches, what is the problem? Turn your head to your right, please. It's very catching today. Please don't feel guilty for anything, you must. Then. Please take your right hand on top of your forehead across and bend your head slowly. We have to be humble about it, you see. So here you have to forgive everyone in general. Now take back your right hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as far as possible. Here, without counting your mistakes, without feeling guilty just for your satisfaction, you will have to ask forgiveness from this all-pervading power. Now please stretch your hand or palm fully. 
Now we go to the last center. So please put the center of your palm on top of the fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now please put down your head. Now push back your fingers nicely, so there's a good pressure on your scalp. Now put down your head and you have to move, move the scalp seven times clockwise, very slowly. That's all we have to do, actually. But remember you have to push back your fingers. Now you can take out your spectacles because you have to close your eyes. It might help also your eyesight. Please, before closing, I must tell you again that please put both the legs apart from each other and the left hand towards me on your lap comfortably in any way that you like. And then now place your right hand on your heart. Here I have told you the sights, the Spirit. You have to ask Me a very fundamental question about yourself in your heart. So please ask in your heart three times. You can call Me Mother or Shri Mataji, whatever you like. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times in your Mother, am I the Spirit? Now, I've told you, if you become the Spirit, you become your own Master. So now take down your right hand, the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side. Here you have to ask another fundamental question. Mother, am I my master? Ask this question three times. I have already told you that I respect your freedom and I cannot force Divine, pure knowledge on you. So now, please take your right hand in the lower portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Here. You have to ask six times because this center has got six petals. Mother, please give Me pure knowledge. Or you can say, Mother, please give Me divine, pure knowledge. Whatever is divine is pure. Six times. As soon as you start asking for pure divine knowledge, the Kundalini starts rising like a premule. Now we have to open our higher centers by our self-confidence for the Kundalini to pass through. Now, take your right hand, you are working only on the left hand side, in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side, press it hard. Now, here with full confidence, please say ten times, Mother, I am My own Master. The Kundalini wants you to show your self-confidence. Please say it ten times. At the very outset, I have told you, 
that the truth is that you are not this body, this mind, this ego, these feelings, these emotions, these conditionings, but you are the pure spirit. So now raise your right hand on top of your heart and here you have to say again with full self-confidence, Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please say it. Please say it and twelve times, Mother, I am the pure spirit. I have already told you that this all-pervading power is the ocean of knowledge, ocean of compassion, ocean of blessings, but above all it is the ocean of forgiveness. And whatever mistakes you might have committed are easily dissolved by this ocean of forgiveness. So forgive yourself. And put your right hand in the corner of your neck and shoulder and turn your head to your right. Here, with full confidence again, you have to say sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say this. It's very important because this center is catching very much tonight here. Now, I have told you whether you forgive or you don't forgive, you don't do anything. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands and torture yourself. Especially at this moment, you should forgive all of them without thinking about them in general, so that your center opens out. Otherwise, at this important moment, you may miss your Self-realization. It's very important to forgive all of them from your heart. Not how many times, it's not the point, from your heart. So now please put your right hand on your forehead across and bend your head as much as you can. And here you have to say, not how many times, but from your heart. Mother, I forgive everyone in general. From your heart, please say it from your heart. <coughs> and now, Please put your right hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as far as possible. Here, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your satisfaction, you have to say, not how many times, but from your heart. O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistake, Knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Just say it from your heart. O oh, Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Now, please touch your palms. Put the center of your palm on top of your fontanelle bone area, which is a soft bone in your childhood. Here again, I cannot force self-realization on you, you have to ask for it. So now push back your fingers, that's important, and please put down your head. Now move your scalp with this pressure seven times, saying seven times, Mother, please give me my Self-realization, because I cannot force it on you. 
please push back your fingers, bend your heads, please push back your fingers. Keep your eyes shut, till I tell you, please keep them shut. Please take down your hands and try to open your eyes slowly. Push both the hands towards me. Now, put the left hand towards me like this, bend your head and see with the right hand if there is a cool or a warm breeze-like energy is coming out of your fontanelle bone area. Now don't doubt because air conditioning is not in your head. So just see for yourself, some people think it is air conditioning. Some people get it hot, some people get it far, some closer, but don't put your hand on top of your head, away from it. See for yourself, and if it is hot, that means you have not yet forgiven. So please forgive us. Now, please put your right hand now, bend your head nicely, and see for yourself with the left hand if there's a cool or a hot breeze like energy is coming out of your fontanel bone area. You have to move your hand up and down, sideways also. All right. Now do it with the left hand again. Little further, some people get it further. Bend your heads, that's important, bend your heads. Now, please put both your hands towards the sky. Push back your head and ask any one of these three questions three times, any one of them. You can say, Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Or, Mother, is this the all-pervading power of Divine Love? Or, Mother, is this the Ru or Param Chaitan? Ask any one of these questions three times. Now please put your hands like this and watch me without thinking, just watch me without thinking. All those who have felt hot or cold breeze on their fingertips, on their palms, or out of their fountain nail bone area, please raise both your hands. My God, look at that. I mean, most of you, may God bless you, it's tremendous. Some didn't get it, very few, but most of you have got it. In any case, all of you should get it. And those who haven't got, should please later on come to the stage and they will do it. But in the meanwhile, we'll try something else for realization and maybe that might help a little bit. See, this might help. This will be only five minutes experiment, let's see. तुम्ही कौन से बटले मालूम आई थी? हाँ, आई था तो 
This is the song they are going to sing. Was written Namadeva by Namadeva in the 16th century, who went uh, then to Punjab, and Guru Nanak Sahib, you see, knew who he was, and he asked him to write poems in Punjabi language, and he's done such a big compilation. I know that this Guru was. A, he was just a tailor, and he went to see, meet another realized soul who was a potter. And when he went and saw the potter kneading the clay with his feet, he just stood there watching. The potter's name was Gora Kumar. Looked at him, and what does he say? In Marathi says that, but meaning that I came to see here the formless, but it is in the form. I see it in the form. I mean, only a saint can say it to another saint. That's what happened, that he went up to Punjab, where Guru Nanak Sahib, called him, looked after him and asked him, and they made beautiful, I mean, such beautiful songs there are, and they are, are in Grantsa, they are all in Grantsa. This is the folk song which was written, which says, O oh Mother, give me my realization. Yoga means yoga, please give me that. All that they sang, all the time they have been singing, even now, but they don't know what it is. And they are saying, O oh, Ambe, means the Kundalini, please rise, rise. And with that you can also clap, which will help a lot. I'm sure this will definitely consolidate your Self-realization. It's a village song, it's a, a stick.
Again, let's see how many of you have really felt on your fingertips or from the pointer nail bone area or on your palms. Raise your both hands. Oh, so who didn't feel before have felt it? <coughs> so many of you. Thank you very much. May God look after. And also have wisdom to respect your freedom. Respect your new status. The real freedom is now. So you respect your self realization and become a fully self realized personality that will help everywhere. May God bless you all. Thank you very much, it was wonderful. You all have paper to know where the centers are and I hope, what's it? And where you are going to have a follow-on program. Please, please come. You know? What's it? They haven't got paper or anything? They all have? 
where are you having follow-on? Yes, yes, but when are they having the follow-on where? You don't know. As you go out, there are leaflets there which will tell you all you need to know about follow-up programs. Ah, oh, we've got one here, finally. There's a series of seven programs beginning on Monday, 11th of April, and then for six consecutive Thursdays commencing, commencing Thursday, 14th of April. At 7.30 to 9.30, the Fireplace Room, Gorman House Arts Centre, Ainsley Avenue, Braden. I know there's a little bracket here, and we will provide light refreshments to follow. <laughs> it again reminds you that all Sahaja Yoga programs are completely free. There, if you have any questions you want to ask about that, um, there's a f two f a phone numbers here that will tell you where to ring. It really tells you everything you want to know, and you can pick one of these up as you go out the door. I know they've got a big supply there. <laughs> One other thing, if there's anybody here who, uh, as soon as Shimataji's left, if there's anybody here who has not felt anything tonight and would like to try, there's probably a very good reason, as we explained to you earlier, you have these centers, you can also have block centers. They may be quite easy to, cl may be quite easy to clear and then that would mean that before you leave here tonight, if there are any of you who didn't feel anything, we'll do our best to make sure you do. Um, the, we're having a first series of seven follow-up programs at Gorman House.